quick lesson in how to make one of my favorite electrical devices, the electroscope. Down in the comments, I will probably put the plans for a solid state version of the electroscope. However, the old mechanical electroscopes were really interesting. You can make one in a few minutes. And this particular design, and the reason that I decided to make a video right now, is my own modification on it. I wanted to have an electroscope that was much, much more sensitive than the usual electroscope where you just drape a little piece of tin foil over a wire. And I also wanted it to be a lot more robust than that because I was handing this out to about 300 people uh, at an electrical demonstration. And the design I came up with just worked so ridiculously well, I thought I'll take a few minutes and I'll pass it along to everybody. So we'll get into the details in just a moment, but right now, since I've got an electroscope and I've got a little piece of PVC, if I were to strip a few electrons away and present them to my electroscope, I'm hoping we'll get a demonstration of the power of the electroscope. Okay, assembling your electroscope couldn't be simpler. All you need is a little bit of metal foil, a wire or other conductive material, and then something to collect electrons. Like in this case, we used a little brass sphere. So the theory of the electroscope is if there are any electrical fields in the area, they will collect on the brass sphere. They'll be transported down the wire and into your little metal plates. Now, since like charges repel each other, the two plates are going to swing apart once they get enough of an electrical charge on them. And of course, this whole thing needs to be suspended above ground so that those electrons don't escape. So it's traditional to use a jar or a flask of some kind. Now, some people have gone ahead and tried to make a device which will read the strength of the electrical currents that are around your electroscope. And the device we're going to make today actually has a very similar construction. So you may want to do that. So I just thought I'd throw in this little quick photo of how that might be done. So the materials you're going to need are a little piece of aluminum foil, a jar, it can be glass or plastic, a brass drawer pull. These are the little brass knobs they use for drawers at the hardware store, a little bit of scrap metal. And in this case, I just went to the hobby store and they sell strips of brass and you can get them in all different sizes and lengths and a little bit of copper wire. So the first thing I did is I soldered the copper wire to the back of the brass plate. Now, because these are high electrostatic voltages, you actually don't even need to solder it. You could tape it or you could glue it and it would actually probably work just as well. But soldering was kind of slick and very strong. So here I've got a clothespin on it, allowing that solder to cool down a bit before I touch it. And it's as simple as that. We've made our electrostatic paddle. So looking at it, you'll notice that I bent one of the wires around the front to serve as a hinge. The other wire is bent to go straight up to our electroscope's cap and to our little collecting sphere at the top. Here I've got the detector with a piece of aluminum foil, which has now been bent over the hinge point. And you can see in these two photos how the hinge will allow the uh, foil to move away from the back plate when they become similarly charged. I found that this arrangement better than the butterfly type arrangement was much sturdier and actually quite a bit more sensitive since the hinge doesn't really require metal to bend in order for it to move apart. So I've got a piece of PVC pipe here, which I rubbed with a cloth. And as I bring it close, the electricity, the static electricity, which is present, is creating more than enough of a field to cause our electroscope to move. It is a beautiful scientific device and a lot of fun to make. But as sensitive and amazing as this simple one is with aluminum foil, if we make one with gold, I think you're going to be absolutely amazed at how sensitive your detector will be. Gold is a totally amazing metal. And I think if you use it in your electroscope, you'll not only be amazed by how well it works in the electroscope, but by the gold itself. It's the most malleable metal known to mankind. And you really get a sense for that here. This has been pounded so flat that it's somewhere between one and two microns thick, probably closer to one. And that thickness would be equivalent to taking one ounce of gold and pounding it so thin that it would cover an entire football field. Now, people eat gold, so you can find this on eBay. It's actually served at tea time, and some people feel that it has health benefits. It's inert, so it'll move through your system, and it shouldn't hurt you at all if you decide you want to eat some of your scrap gold. Okay, so to attach that gold leaf to your brass plate, I just took the brass plate and set it on top of the paper that comes with the gold. So they usually sandwich the gold in between two pieces of paper. It's so delicate that if you were to touch this gold, even if you pick up a corner of this gold, it's very easy to tear it and have it come apart. So I left it in the paper. I used some extremely sharp scissors and I just cut along the line that I made there in order to get a piece of gold that will more or less exactly fit the gold plate. And this is how I attached it. Okay, so there's our little gold leaf in place. I'm going to really try to put like the tiniest little line here. So I'll steady this of super glue that I possibly can. Actually, that's not tiny, but it's nice and straight. And then I'm going to really try to finesse 
that gold up to where it just touches that. We'll see if we can get it to slide on here. There's probably an electrostatic way of getting it to slide on here when I think about it. And I don't want it to wrinkle, I want it to be beautiful. So let's see, maybe we can get our glue to move instead of our gold. And once it lays flat, I'm going to line that up. I'm just going to be really picky here. And I hope that's all showing up on camera. Oh wow, it's already adhering. And there we go, there's our beautiful gold leaf attached. So here's an example of what I mean about that gold being so thin that if you even touch it, look at this, it just vanishes. <laughs> it returns to the dust, right? So you've got to be very careful, but boy, this is an interesting, interesting metal to work with. All right, I actually had to move the camera back for this test. Look how high above it. Actually, it's not even in frame yet. The PVC is, and that gold leaf is already deflecting. It's absolutely amazing. This will work from actually from a couple of feet away, and it's just the static electricity which is present on this PVC pipe, and that's more than enough to move that amazing lightweight gold reflector.